welcome to infinity capital everyone my name is raj today we are going to discuss pricol limited it's an auto ancillary company uh this is a very old company formed in 1974 they've got their headquarters in uh, tamil nadu coimbatore a uh, couple of reasons why i'm looking at this company i'm going to take you through the investor relations uh, pdf make you understand uh, you know why uh, this is a lucrative investment option so they have nine manufacturing locations uh, one is in uh, indonesia seven in india okay and they have two offices one in singapore and australia so what are the products that they are making right here driver information system as uh, you may have noticed uh most cars have digital information systems now cars or you know bikes scooters what not and uh, going forward almost all cars will have digital or semi digital information displays right so you know these this company can benefit from this transition then they have uh, the sensors and switches some of them are for fuel so you know if we are uh, moving on to a ev uh, you know sort of a um, car then the fuel sensors might not be uh, required but there are other sensors like speed sensor camshaft crankshaft shaft position sensors then you have water pumps oil pumps you know electrical products and telematics right so what are telematics you know they are used uh, for information flow you know generated from vehicles via wireless networks so cars as cars become more and more uh, you know tech savvy um, more of these information systems will be required and not only in private vehicle or to uh, two wheelers but they'll be required in agriculture vehicle agricultural vehicles you know heavy duty vehicles commercial vehicles everything will become more digitized you know to display the information about the vehicle to the driver now looking at pricol so these are the things that they make sensors and switches which are important in any car pumps and mechanical products telematics auto electrical products so they pretty they are insulated to a large extent from the upcoming ev revolution uh, this is the reason why i have started looking at this company so high concentration to the two wheeler industry 70% of the revenue comes from this segment although two wheelers have not recovered as well but it's a low ticket item so as soon as the economy recovers it this is something that people will buy more easily you know a car is expensive and not everybody wants to buy a 5 7 lakh rupee car that's the average price of a hatchback you know you can get a bike for starting as low as 50 60000 rupees <coughs> so although the two wheeler industry is going through some issues right now but it should pick up going forward as the economy becomes much better 90% of the revenue comes from domestic 10% comes from export so earlier they had 30% of their revenues coming from export but these were coming from some of the subsidiaries which were loss making which they've hived off so if you look here you know they had this uh, entity in brazil which they divested in fy15 and then they had entities in czech republic republic mexico and one in india which they divested in 2018 so they have written off 400 crores in the process of selling all of these loss making entities right okay so this is the reason why the exports have come down from 30% to 10% which they can probably scale up in the near future so they are uh, supplying to hero tvs bajaj ashok leyland tata motors you know all the big names 57% of the revenue comes from top 3 customers so this is a risk in the company you know if they lose business because we are in a very fast changing digital landscape when it comes to cars so if uh, you know if they lose a client or two it could be bad for the company so something that we need to take into cognizance right and uh, another important information is that they had a non compete clause with johnson so 
<coughs> you know they have started manufacturing new products for CVs and PVs because the non-compete clause has expired. So you know they are making these new products. Uh, in this presentation, probably they have listed. Um, so one of the presentations they have listed to which companies they are uh, catering to. I believe it is Tata Motors. You know, they some of their digital uh, display systems. These these systems they are providing to Nexon. I believe if I'm not uh, mistaken, right? Apart from that, there is the management's uh, conference call which I read through some of the key points uh, that I would like to highlight. So most of you may have heard that there is a chip shortage which is hampering uh, you know most uh, most of these sort of companies uh, production because you know chip is extremely important for these uh, displays and electronic parts so that is one of the issues right so headwinds for uh, for the automotive industry you know because we are heavily dependent on electronic parts ICs and LCDs it's the raw material okay so what are the other key important things they want to reduce the debt on the company they've already reduced it from from 250 crores to around 140 130 crores and they want to become debt free by march 2023 so in one year's time okay and uh, they continue to invest around five percent of their soils towards uh, r d process technology which is uh, pretty good right Apart from that, they've generated a free cash flow after CAPEX, is around 26 crores. Okay. So they've, this has gone towards debt reduction. So they're very, very, very keen on um, reducing their debt. Right. <coughs> so long term borrowing has been, sig has seen a significant decrease and further reduced as on today. And we are hopeful of bringing this number down to less than 100 crores. So this is from the management commentary. Okay, so their borrowings have come down from 245 crores to 142 crores. Working capital is around 80 crores. Right. So these are the important things that uh, I wanted to highlight. Let's look at some of the other metrics. Um, I'd like to show you the uh, shareholding pattern. So <coughs> roughly around 30% uh, of the shares are out with public and uh, then there is uh, individual entities who owned who are not promoter entities but they own around three percent two percent right so <coughs> i would love to see you know less amount of um, um, uh, shares out with public you know if the less there is the better it is easier for the stock to go up you know, because uh, retail has a tendency to sell uh, sell the stock, you know, if it goes up by 15-20%. Institutions hold on to the stock for a longer period of time. So there is Nomura, BAO and decent uh, amount of holdings by institutions. So that is pretty good. All right. Now we are going to look at the cash flow. So they've been generating healthy cash flows in the past two years from operations, which is pretty good. Right. So that has also helped them to deleverage you know, part of their balance sheet. Okay. And uh, this 250 crores has become 145 crores. So something to keep in mind earlier, they had 430 crores of borrowings, which they have sort of brought it down. Other than that, they have cash equivalents of 52 crores, which is uh, pretty good. So they can use it for further growth or use it for, um, you know, their um, working capital requirements. Okay, on a profit and loss standpoint, if we'll see their sales trailing 12 month sales are, you know, pretty high. They've crossed the uh, 2020 levels. They are pretty close to March 2019. And uh, considering the fact that they divested of their, con you know, companies in 2019. So they were, uh, <coughs> they were around two companies which they divested. So those numbers are also reflecting in 19 numbers. So the trailing 12 month numbers are pretty high. You know, they are doing pretty good. Their margins are intact. Okay. Earlier they were making losses. Now they are making profits. Although the profits are flat, you know, as compared to last year, but the sale revenue is growing. And that is uh, the reason why I'm looking at the company. 
on a quarter on quarter basis if you'll if you'll see there is a um, you know sequentially the numbers are great and on a year on year uh, basis uh, the numbers are down so this is because operating profit margin has gone down and then there was other income you know so if we remove uh, 28 crores out of 15 the net profit comes to around 12 crores so sequ uh, year on year basis also the sales are higher and the profits are higher okay uh, on a pe basis the stock looks uh, expensive but there has been this divestment and all of these things so you know uh, we'll have to wait for a couple of more quarters uh, of earnings to come in that's when we can have a better uh, understanding of the you know uh, of the uh, price to earnings multiples currently the price to earning multiples look inflated but uh, they should normalize because in 2020 they divested their company okay apart from that so what what are the triggers in this company see what i am looking at right now is that you know there will be less effect in terms of their products are 60 70 percent of their products are used in ev uh, evs as well so it's not going to hit them uh, and you know they have around 4.5 to 5 percent of their sales which is going into uh, r d and process enhancement so that will help them to come up with new products and other than that the revenues are increasing which is a good thing looking there is a degrowth in uh, the two wheelers business but their revenue is increasing which means they are doing pretty good so we'll have to look at uh, look at it from a quarter on quarter basis and see if the sales and profits are coming at a higher clip and hopefully the margins are not getting impacted so the chip shortage on the there are some other issues right now you know there were container issues supply chain logistic issues and then we have this omicron but once this subsides things should normalize for this company okay as far as uh, the uh, ratings are concerned the ratings have been reaffirmed you know so the ratings are also intact for this company you can come here and read the ratings and understand uh, <coughs> more about the company okay uh, most importantly from a technical point of view if we look at uh, this company this was listed somewhere around 17 and it is pretty much trading at the same around the same price all right and uh, the company was already uh, if you see uh, the company sort of the stock made a bottom in around uh, august 19 and it was already on a higher trajectory right so uh, the, the, there were good developments happening in the company all right now from uh, from a technical standpoint what has happened 50 day moving average is uh, trending upwards the so 200 day moving average is trending upwards right and if you'll notice that although mid cap small cap has been pretty volatile this stock is constantly moving up there is strength in the price and uh, one of the institutions have bought around one percent stake in this company recently uh, it it will be in the SAST uh, information, so you can no not not in the SAST, but in the uh, <coughs> we, <coughs> we can find it on trend line. Just a second, guys. I'll just log in. So we can find it on trend li trend line. Who bought uh, this uh, stock recently? So there was a big purchase by uh just a second guys pry call yes pry call limited deals okay so yes here you see aditya birla sun life you know they've bought around one lakh shares okay so this was the big purchase that happened and then there was nandini trade in trade x they bought roughly around 637,000 shares right so this was the big purchase that has happened and technically this stock looks pretty strong so uh, I've bought this stock between this level between 120 and 130 I've finished my purchasing uh, 
and i'll be looking uh, out for the next couple of quarters uh, and see what sort of earnings and profit profitability is coming in what is the downside risk in this stock you know if the earnings don't come at a higher clip margins get impacted stock may take a beating but um, i'm guessing that you know if this stock sort of uh, correct uh, i'll be looking to add around uh, 9800 rupees so the focus will be on uh, seeing what sort of numbers are being uh, published by big auto companies like maruti mahindra tatas if their sales are rising if their sales are rising largely the sales of auto ancillary like prycol should rise so so we are looking at for the, for the next two quarters we'll be looking at growth if the growth comes in i'll continue to hold this stock uh you know and we can expect higher pr- uh, prices uh, coming into this stock uh thanks a lot for watching guys remember this is not a buy sell recommendation it's an educational video uh, thanks a lot for watching